This is Beyond the Big Screen Podcast with your host, Steve Guerra. Here is another Beyond the Big Screen teaser for episodes coming soon. I hope you enjoy and definitely tune in for future episodes. If you want to learn more, you can head over to beyondthebigscreen.com. You can also send me an email to steve at a2zhistorypage.com or follow us on social media by searching for A2Z History. I will see you next time beyond the big screen. Well, they at, at first they were talking about moving couture to Berlin. They really wanted to steal whatever they could of French culture. And then they decided not to do that. They decided to keep it in Paris because fashion, high fashion, especially couture, is so closely associated with the national cultural identity and the identity of French women. You know, the the idea that the French woman is a woman of elegance and chic and it's embodied by high fashion. So they decided to keep it in Paris. They wisely realized that you couldn't really take Parisian couture out of Paris. And a few designers stayed and worked with the Germans, like um, Jacques Fath and Lucien Lalonde, who was head of the Chambre Syndicale, which uh, regulated couture. But the Germans also instituted these very draconian restrictions on couture you could only use so much fabric per garment. They even limited the amount of thread you could use. They limited the amount of garments you could show during a particular collection. So it was, it was a very reduced kind of high fashion. This was going on, and there were negotiations between the United States and, and Britain, 41, 42. And it was decided that uh, there just wasn't enough room in Britain to do, do all the manufacturing that would be necessary to come up with an atomic bomb. And after some bureaucratic finagling going back and forth in the United States, President Roosevelt designated the army as the group that would develop the atomic bomb. They uh, started something called the Manhattan Project. And they put an army colonel who said, if I'm gonna do this, you have to promote me. So they made him a brigadier general. That was Leslie Groves, that was head of it. This becomes important because what you have is the army uh, attitude towards life, which is someone gives orders, someone obeys the orders, that's that against the scientists who say, well, you know, uh, I think this may be true, but just because you say it's true doesn't mean it's true. I have to do some experiments. I'm gonna talk to my buddies about this. This became a a conflict with the Manhattan Project. In any case, it started going, and as part of the cooperation between the United States and, and Britain on this project, the British shipped over 30, something like 30 of their outstanding physicists to work with the Americans on it. And Fuchs was one of these. He first went to New York City where uh, there there was a company called Kellex that had been set up to work on the atomic bomb. And then he was sent out to Los Alamos. When he was in New York City, he thought, uh, we're talking about something like late 1943 here, he thought, Well, the Soviet Union is uh, fighting the Nazis, and they're in kind of a little corner. And it would be very good if they knew uh, what was going on with the atomic bomb, since they might be able to develop one of their own. (laughs) 